for humanity to advance beyond where we are now, we need to have the next generation of devices that enable us to go faster and further and more reliable. Pick this up and just give it a little rinse with the propanol. Don't worry, this is fiddly stuff. We studied materials for application in electronic devices. The main challenge that we have is that our standard semiconductors, materials that can handle electricity, are actually not that great at dealing with high power loads. We have to rethink what kind of materials we can use. If we don't achieve this, then all the technologies from actually a washing machine, all the way to electric cars, trains, planes, to wind turbines, will be stuck where we are right now in how efficient they are in their energy use. To really get us to a sustainable point, we want to move beyond our coal power plants. We need devices that we can stick in a car or in an electric bike that are still able to handle these amounts of energy being put through them without just failing on us. The main semiconductor used today in power electronics is silicon carbide, and it can conduct quite large amounts of electricity. But at the interfaces to other materials, we have a huge population of defects, points in the material that limit how well it can work. How do you look at single defects where an atom is displaced or an atom is missing? When we first started to think about this issue, my first thought was no chance. We're talking about characterizing something that's hidden under lots of materials, but what we're looking at is maybe one or two nanometers in size. As a chemist, you don't really get exposed to semiconductors because it's really a physics-dominated area. But I was quite fortunate that near where I live, there is a massive semiconductor company, and I managed to get a summer internship there. And I think that was a great early experience of bridging those different areas in science. This is one of our X-ray photoelectron spectrometers. In essence, we use light and then we excite electrons. The electrons fly into the analyzer and we measure the energy. How could we ever just see the defects themselves? We knew we needed a very powerful machine. You can't just do that in a standard lab spectrometer. The only place in the world that gives you what we needed was Diamond Light Source, which is the UK's national synchrotron. A synchrotron is in essence a particle accelerator that uses x-rays. It's like a doctor would for a human to look through layers of tissue. It can look through layers of materials to learn something about them. Synchrotron experiments are quite intense. The time we have is incredibly precious. You have three days to do an experiment. The experiment has to work. Don't okay. open yet, Paul. Okay, yep. Keep Leave it. Close. Keep yeah. It it's not like the spectrum just appears in a split second. These measurements take hours and hours. You have to be so patient. Definitely the first day it did not go to plan. What we wanted to see was even the tiniest peak specific to those defects that we are interested in. It's just one noisy line after another noisy line after another noisy line. Oh no, this is not working. You have to imagine, we're working 24 hours a day. We just had to push through. There was no stopping. Do you have any sleep at all? A few hours. <laughs> and you're just kind of waiting for something to happen. And then, of course, for quite some time, nothing happened. And then I remember just seeing nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh my god, we have a peak. Is, is this real? Did we do something wrong? Hang on. No, beam is still there. Sample is still there. Settings are right. Everyone immediately, like, two to one screen with the data on. And you're just like, yes. Wow. You kind of drop everything else. We've got it. It's there in front of our eyes. We're measuring those defects down that sample at this like one nanometer kind of space. And no one's done that before. The magnitude of it all only comes to you when you're then talking with your industry collaborators and they're going like, that's awesome. We can now change our process, make better devices. 
get to more energy efficient cars or a better wind turbine. Synchrotrons are one way to look at surfaces and interfaces of materials. I think it's super important that we remember that there's always the next discovery waiting, the next question to be answered. Is there something out there? Is there a material that's even better than silicon carbide, that can push our technologies even further than we can at the moment? What's your next great possible going to be? Which one shall I give you? 